So I'm always getting asked the question, what's a good aircraft for beginners? You know, it could be fixed wing planes, helicopters, or quadcopters. So today I'm going to be talking about an aircraft that's actually good for beginners. And the cool thing about it is that it can be set up to be good for intermediate to advanced pilots as well. All right, so here we go. We got our quadcopter all turned on and set up. Got my transmitter here. Now with the NASA, uh, you can pick just about any which way you want. You can go pretty much anywhere down with both sticks. So down to the left, down to the right, or down both in or down both out. Um, I think I typically do down to both in. And that's going to initiate the quadcopter, turn the props on, and then you're ready to go. So there we go, ready to fly. Now the other cool thing you can probably see is there's a flashing LED. And that's another nice indicator of a lot of different things, but uh, one is which flight mode you're in. So I've got um, my three position switch right here it goes to my different flight modes. So right now it's in the uh, ATT or attitude mode. So take off and you'll just see how nice and crisp it handles take straight, taken straight off up. Just like that. I'm not giving any input to this right stick here. You can see how nice and stable that thing is. Just put it right where I want it. Let go of my right stick. And then I can just control my altitude with my, with my throttle stick. But I mean, look at that thing. It's just sitting right there. These things are so fun to take aerial videos and photography with. Now again, this is the attitude hold mode. As I flip my stick around, it's not gonna let the, the quad tilt very far. See that? So this is great for beginners. If you're getting crazy with your sticks, don't worry, you're not gonna crash it. Unless you do something really stupid for a long time, okay? Now watch as I, f I flip this switch over here. This is my flight mode switch. This is the more aggressive flying. It's gonna dip down. Okay, so now I can fly this thing around more aggressively if I want to. But you gotta be careful. You gotta make sure you're ready for this kind of flying. So now you can see wherever that stick goes, that quadcopter just stays there. Oops. So you can see that uh, definitely gotta be on top of your game. So we're just gonna go switch it right back into uh, auto level mode here and take off. Oop, I gotta reinitialize. There we go. See, no problem. Real light hit, doesn't matter. Let's fly around, have some fun. Now one thing I didn't stress very much in the, the earlier part of my video is what all this uh, auto leveling capability does. It's confidence. You want that confidence because when you have that, you're gonna feel more, you're gonna feel better about flying these things around. I kind of liken it to having a, a good set of brakes on your, your car or your, your bike if you're riding around. I used to do a bunch of mountain biking and. The better brakes I got, the faster I'd go because I knew that if I needed to stop in a heartbeat, I could do it. So it's the same thing with the auto level capabilities of these, of these multi-rotors and the NASA board here. It gives you that confidence to know that you can fly around and get crazy. That's my battery on my, uh, just my timer on my transmitter here. I'm sure I got more flight time. So anyway, it gives you that confidence to know if you're getting crazy and funky that you just flip this switch here and add it and uh, put it back in attitude mode and it's gonna basically save itself so here's non attitude mode okay I'm flying around oh it's getting kind of crazy and then I just reach right up here flip it up and it just levels itself I got this quadcopter as an ARF from whitespyquad.com and this quadcopter has been specifically designed for FPV so what does that mean so two things really stand out about this frame design. One is that the, uh, the arms are a little bit longer, so it's a little bit wider side to side, and it gives it more stability when it's flying. 
And another thing that they've done is taken the arms, and if you look here, instead of being like a, a perfectly shaped X with the arms, the front arms are actually back a little bit, and the back arms are actually longer, and they're even farther back. And what this does is it makes it so that the propellers are not in view of the camera while you're flying. So if you're trying to fly around and take videos for a movie or something else, who knows what you're doing, um, having the propellers in view kind of messes up the video. So it's been designed so that you can put all your camera equipment up front and have your battery in the back here and it's still nice and balanced. Now I've flown this thing with a four cell, which is what it came with as, a, as an ARF, and I've also flown it with three cells. And there's plenty of ability here to slide your battery back and forth to keep this quad balanced uh, depending on what kind of camera equipment you have on the front. Some people might use a GoPro, maybe you'll use a small Sony camera, or if you're like me, you're using the, uh, the Foxtech FPV version 3 camera. So with the nice wide platform, the arms on this quadcopter, not only is it nice and stable for FPV flying, but this also makes it a good quadcopter for beginners. Now another feature of this quadcopter that I really like um, is the flight control board. And this is another thing that I would basically consider is a feature or something that makes it good for beginners. And the reason I say that is because what it has is the NASA flight control board. And this is a very easy to set up flight control board. When I got this quadcopter, all I had to do was bind my transmitter to the radio and then go into the uh, settings and uh, set up one of my three position switches so that it could properly sense which flight mode it wanted to be in. And that's pretty much it. Then you're ready to fly. It can't get much simpler than that. Now you guys might remember from about a year ago, the first quadcopter that I did a review on was the, the Hover Things quad. And um, that's a great quad. The difference, one of the main differences of that quadcopter is that it has the multi-Wii flight control board. Now that's a very good flight control board. It's also very stable and it also has the auto level feature which this NASA has. But one of the main differences is that the, uh, the computer software that you have to use to make changes to it is a lot harder to learn or maybe a little bit harder to learn. And I consider myself on the lazy side when it comes to computer and programming and setting these things up. So any place that I can find that makes things easier, that's where I'm going to gravitate towards. And uh, the guys at uh, DJI NAS have done a great job with this flight control board and the software that you use to, uh, to make changes to it so that it's a lot easier. Now again, this um, quadcopter came all assembled and set up from whitespyquad.com and he did a really nice job with it. Um, I've got my FPV gear on here, it makes it look a little more cluttered. But um, you know, when I got this quad, everything, all the wires are nicely covered and zip tied, and everything's in a really good location. So I got to say, you know, A plus on the job for assembling this quad and giving me a, a really nice uh, ARF quadcopter. Now you can also buy these in a ready to fly if you're just getting into this, which is again why I call this a good beginner quad. You can go to whitespyquad.com and you can get the full ready to fly package. That's the uh, quadcopter with the battery and the receiver and the transmitter, everything ready to go. It's going to be pre-programmed, set up from him. So you get that thing in a box, you charge that battery, you turn everything on and you're ready to fly. So when you're flying this quadcopter around, you have several different modes. And I'm just going to talk about a couple of the basic modes for right now because there's a lot of options. And that's one cool thing about this is that it's easy enough for a beginner to just get it, turn it on and go fly and be in a nice auto level mode. But if you want to, when you get more advanced, you can uh, mess with the settings and make it uh, more aggressive the way that it flies if you want to. Now the configuration I got this quadcopter in uh, also included the GPS module here. Now this adds another level of stability and accuracy in terms of how well this quadcopter is going to hold its attitude and flight position while it's flying around or just hovering. So when I'm flying this around, the three different modes I have is one to have all the extra help flying this turned off. And so basically what that's going to do is wherever I put my stick, if I, if I bank my quadcopter like that, it's just going to stay like that and it'll continue to go like that until I make another input. And uh, that's more for the advanced pilot. Um, the next mode would be uh, the attitude hold mode. And the cool thing about this is if, if you're in a situation where you're flying around and all of a sudden your quadcopter gets uh, in an orientation which you're looking at it, you can't tell what the orientation is, maybe it's angled, it looks like it's going down towards the ground, you flip your attitude switch and it's going to right your quadcopter or multi-rotor, whatever it is, and um, just level it, and it'll keep it level. And then any control input you give, it's only going to tilt it a little bit, not a whole lot. 
and this is a great mode for flying around if you're just a beginner. So a minute ago I was talking about the software differences between the multi-Wii platform or control board and that's the control board that was used on the quadcopter that I reviewed about a year ago and um, then the NASA here. Now again the NASA is very user friendly or for somebody who's not interested in going in and doing all those really teeny fine-tuning tweaks you can go in and do that if you really get into the software but it's a lot easier to, to set up. Um, for example on the multi-wee flight control board which is the one that my first uh, reviewed quadcopter had uh, it breaks up your gains into three different settings it's P, I, and D and to this day I'm still definitely having trouble wrapping my brain around the P, I, and D. It's definitely harder to set up. On the NASA they just give you one, uh, one gain for each so you've got your gain for aileron, elevator, and then yaw. Okay so again if you're just getting into multi-rotors and quadcopters and you want to get something that's very easy to fly right out of the box or if you're looking for like a kit uh, frame that again is also easy to set up, I highly recommend whitespyquad.com and check out the different equipment they have there. So of course as luck would have it, the day that I went out to film the onboard footage, it was rather breezy. So you can see I'm letting some leaves fall out of my hand and they're not going down, they're going to the side because we're probably fighting uh, 15 to 20 knot gusting uh, winds here. So anyway, just keep that in mind as you're watching the footage here um, that we're fighting a wind like that for, for most of the time here. So on this day here, I got to go out with my buddy who owns aquacopters.com and uh, he was testing out some of his own new equipment. So I'm trying to, I'm flying FPV here and I'm following him around as he's flying. I haven't really done a lot of this chase flying here where there's two aircraft in the air and uh, one is trying to follow the other one while filming. But I'm definitely glad that I had the White Spy FPV quad because uh, just I think everything, the way that it's built, really contributed to me actually being able to do this in this breeze here. So following him around and oops, got a little bit too close to that branch. So he had to come out and get it. Who is that? I think that might be Sasquatch running out to get it there. So anyway, I thought I'd follow him around since the aircraft was down. So here's me kind of flying around the tree doing a little pan shot here. The camera that I was using to film this was mounted directly to the quad frame. You know, there was no sort of cushioning. So I think that that's mostly what's contributing to the jello in here. Um, the quad does come with a 2800 milliamp hour four cell battery. So with that, you could actually run some smaller nine inch props. And I did try that. And uh, with this particular camera setup mounted directly to the frame, the nine inch props did give a little bit smoother video. With the battery that comes with the quad, you can fly for about 10 minutes uh, with the lightweight FPV gear that I had. Uh, I did actually try a 5,000 milliamp hour 4 cell, and uh, based on my estimates, I would say it could fly for just about 20 minutes with that. So you can really load this thing up with batteries and fly for quite a while doing some FPV flying. So I highly recommend checking out whitespyquad.com if you're interested in getting a kit or ready to fly or almost ready to fly quadcopter.